Right, more on uh, cryptanalysis, different uh, types of attacks. Um, now, uh, sometimes you, you only have the ciphertext. Um, and if you have uh, ciphertext, there are, there are various attacks that you can do against it. For example, you know, the frequency analysis that we talked about with regard to the Caesar cipher um, and digraph, trigraph analysis. There's various um, types of uh, cryptanalysis that you can do if you only have the, uh, the cipher text. Um, then there is what is known as uh, that's that's ciphertext only. That, okay. Then there is known plain text attack. Now, in known plain text attack, it's it's not just the plain text that you know. Of course, if you know the plain text, if you know all the plain text, uh, you um, you don't have uh, you know you don't need to do cryptanalysis. But um, if you have plain text as well as the ciphertext, you always assume that you have ciphertext, then you can sort of match, you know, are there patterns? Um, as we talked about with regard to electronic code book, do you have, uh, you know, a repeated ciphertext, therefore, you know, obviously you have repeated plain text, and you can start to make assumptions on that basis. Um, <clears throat> then there's linear cryptanalysis, which gets into uh, mathematics, um, and there's uh, there's various of attacks in there, and differential uh, linear cryptanalysis. Um, this is kind of interesting because that was um, the attack that was eventually found to be, uh, you know, that Dez was, was subject to. And that, in fact, um, the NSA, in, in messing with the data encryption standard and the, the algorithm, strengthening part of it and weakening part of it, had, in fact, made it uh, less subject to differential linear cryptanalysis. So, you know, rather than actually weakening the overall system, um, they had strengthened it, uh, protected it against this, uh, this type of attack. Um, and then there's chosen plain text. And, and chosen plain text, um, uh, it gets into an interesting, if, if you can choose, if you can force the enemy, for example, to, uh, uh, encrypt something of your choice. Um, or if you have a crypto device with a loaded key, you can't sort of read the, the internals of it, but you can um, uh, use it to uh, encrypt uh, material of your choice. There, there's various attacks against that. Um, one of the... I, I suppose this is more of a social engineering attack than anything else, but... Uh, in the Battle of Midway, uh, the Japanese, um, they had their purple encryption system, but they also had uh, code books. And uh, the Americans were um, uh, pretty sure at one point that uh, in the Japanese code books, um, JA stood for Midway Island. Uh, and so they said to Midway Island, the, the people there, you know, report that you're uh, desalinization plant is is broken and that you're low on water and the people on midway said but we aren't and they said no no we we know that just do it and shortly uh the japanese traffic from the area said uh ja reports low on water so they, that that confirmed to them and and therefore they knew when the Japanese fleet was going to be in that area and uh, the Battle of Midway was a very important turning point in the in the Battle of the Pacific in the Second World War um, 
Anyways, a, a, a few variations on some of these adaptive chosen plain text attacks so that you can, um, uh, again, you know, it's, it's much more likely that you're doing this when you have the, um, uh, the actual crypto device that you uh, take uh, some, you know, plain text that you choose encrypt it and then based on the results of that you start to form hypothesis okay what if we encrypt this specific thing we think it's going to look something like that and you know uh, whether or not it is and you can get various things there um uh chosen cipher text uh oh well yeah um adaptive chosen cipher text um uh, there yeah, we've, we've talked about the man... Well, no, no, sorry. The man in the middle attack. This is when somebody actually has interfered with your distribution of keys. And you think that you are sharing a key with, you know, Alice and Bob. I uh, think they're sharing the keys with each other uh, on either end. Um, but instead, Mallory has... Uh, uh, is the man in the middle. And, and Alice is actually communicating with Mallory... And Bob is communicating with Mallory, and Mallory is re-encrypting uh, materials from either side and, and reading the entirety of the traffic and modifying it at will. Uh, side channel attacks, this is um, looking at um, physical characteristics, the power, the uh, energy dissipation, uh, for example, of a crypto device. And, and what does that tell you about the key? How many one bits are there? Um, similarly, you've got timing and power attacks, um, looking at how long uh, it takes a device uh, to perform encryption as, as information about what type of encryption is going on. And my personal favorite, the birthday attack. Um, now, uh, I can't do this with you guys because I don't know all of you there. Uh, and of course, there would be many thousands of you, hopefully, over time. Um, but if we get, uh, you know, typically I'll have 30 people in a seminar and I say, you know, what's, what's the odds that two of you have the same birthday? Well, you know, 50-50 chance, um, we'd have to have 180 people in the room or 183 because there's 365, well, 366 possible birthdays. And so um, I'm willing to bet that uh, of the 30 people here, we can find a match on the birthdays. And I actually, uh, I always saw, offer when I'm, you know, fairly sure of this, uh, and I am fairly sure of this, um, that uh, I, I'd be willing to put money on it. And actually over, you know, two decades of, of doing the courses and, and making this type of bet um i never lost and and you know that that's kind of strange because i should lose some of the time um anyways uh i did one time you know they they accepted you know they were gonna actually do it for money i plunked down there were 35 in that class i plunked down 35 dollars at the front of the room and we went through it and of course got a match and they welched. Oh well. The thing is that I have I have kind of misled you because the odds of matching a birthday a is only 183, you know, one one chance at 183, uh, or a 50-50 chance for 183 if we are comparing to one specific birthday. But when we are comparing everybody's birthday to everybody's birthday, which is all we need to do to get a match, the odds go way down. As a matter of fact, it's uh, about 1 in 23. So if I have 23 people in the class, that's about the level of a 50-50 chance. Interesting um, in terms of the digital signatures, because we can try and create a whole bunch of different things uh, for our widget order that says, yes, and a whole bunch of things that say no and try and find a match between two of them and therefore win the court case. 